Hello everybody and welcome back to another Draft League Top 10. Uh, I mean, I guess this one's not really a Top 10, just more of um, 10 points to take into consideration um, when you are drafting in a Draft League. Um, I mean, not everyone will draft the same way as I do, so this is more just my personal way that I uh, look at uh, some components to my um, to my draft I should I should say um, this isn't a how to draft video um, I think most people that would be watching any of my content would have a bit of experience with a draft league so they'll know what to do in that situation um, but this is just more of me covering a few different um, topics that I look for when I am drafting not a straight up how to draft you know. um, but yeah so it's a lot of it's about determining what's important when you're drafting uh, depending on what style you're going for there's obviously things that will vary I tend to stick around the balance to the bulky balance when I'm playing um, I don't I don't generally go full hyper offense or full stall but um, yeah I'm, I'm generally around the middle when I'm drafting so that that um, will be taken like just take that into account when you're watching this video because if you're going hyper offense, you're obviously going to need less bulky things. And um, if you go more stall, you're obviously going to need less uh, super offensive things. Um, and there are some there are some styles, uh, some components to a draft that work better in either type. So. Um, yeah, so your mileage may vary, I guess, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. The first thing I'm going to talk about that are important in Draft League, the, the first few points on this 10-point list, because it is still a 10-point list, it's just not really a top 10. Um, cores. Cores are important. Uh, not necessarily uh, the most important thing to focus on when you're drafting um, focusing on overall team synergy is obviously uh, important which uh, a lot of people including me a lot of the time um, forget to focus on and uh, just draft like as many different types as you can whether the Pokemon really work together well or not um, and uh, sometimes that comes back to bite you sometimes it works out but yeah um, synergy is important but cores are also important um, yeah the cores are just like a combination of Pokemon that cover each other's weaknesses and like help it out each other's strengths and stuff like that uh, allows each Pokemon in the core to shine basically um, the most important core in my opinion is the dragon fairy steel uh, it generally offers um, very very good offensive and defensive potential like things like Garchomp um, a really nice offensive dragon um, Jirachi be a either an offensive steel or a defensive steel depending on how you like to play with him or Fable the same with Fairy um, but uh, there's tons of options for both of these in the higher picks um, and then as you get lower, you start uh, coming across less and less of these typings that uh, they're, just, they're just starting to feel niche picks, um, niche, they, they, a niche, they feel a niche slot on the team if you go lower, whereas the Dragon Fairy steals of the higher tiers are a lot more um, versatile to, to use that meme so um, I, f 
feel like getting these guys, uh, the higher you can, uh, the better you're gonna have. That's that's why I try and focus on my Dragon Fairy Steel Core uh, as the first thing out the gate when I'm drafting. Um, second core, uh, you would probably be expecting me to talk about the Grass Fire Water Core, um, but no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I personally don't really like the Grass Fire Water Core. As a core itself um, the reason is I think fire fire typing is a bit redundant in draft league I mean unless you're going for like a Sun team or I mean there's nothing wrong with drafting a fire type at all um, but there's a lot of things that hit the same things that fire types do and there's a lot of things that fend against the same things that fire types do so I, I feel like um, well, there are some good fire type mons to get. Fire type in general is a redundant typing, and therefore I don't like, I don't overly like building up this as a core. Uh, so some alternative cores that I do think are worth getting are the dark psychic and fighting core. There's lots of quality options for all these typings. Uh, like you get the Zoroarks, the Weaviles, the um, Hydreigons, Alolan Persians, things like that um, are all good dark options and uh, that's just scratching the surface there. Psychic, there's uh, Alakazam, Azelf, um, like even picking up dual typings are fine like Mega Latias, Latios, those kinds of stuff. Uh, Muse a great psychic to get, uh, but there's even good options getting down lower. Like there's there's Espeon, there's Uxi, um, even Mesprit, stuff like that. And then fighting type, there's uh, lots of good fighting type options as well. Buzzwall, Conkelda, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> Mega Mega Lopunny, uh, Mega Mega Galide, um all those kinds of things so uh, in general uh, these three typings make up a pretty decent offensive core um, obviously you can get some good defensive ones as well uh, like Uxie, like Cresselia um, Hariyama, Kekelda is pretty bulky himself uh, Goethe, you put an Eevee light on that and he's a uh, Pretty dang bulky too. Uh, Alolan Persian can be built decently bulky. Um, Alolan Muck can be a bulky dark type for sure. Um, Crocodile, etc. There's lots, lots of good options for whatever fits your team in all of these typings. Uh, a dark typing is pretty important in the fact that it stops. Um, a lot of psychic types that can just like calm mind set up and then run like a mono attack. So um, things like Bracelia and um, Sigilyph, I guess, stuff that want to just um, like set up and then things that could use um, stored power. As a move, the fable stuff like that uh, can't afford to just run mono stored power with the setup and like rest or something like that. When you got a dark type, because it won't be hitting them, uh, because dark type is immune to psychic, obviously. Um, and then uh, fighting types good for breaking. Uh, normal types, uh, things like Snorlax and Porygons uh, that can be quite hard to get rid of if you don't have any super effective hits so I feel like a fighting type is uh, pretty important and then psychic type helps you deal with those fighting types that your opponent's gonna have uh, it helps deal with poison types um, that kind of stuff so I feel like uh, this kind of core is um, generally pretty pretty important and uh, just in general psychic types uh, tend to have a lot of utility moves as well so um, they can be quite useful on a team in that situation as well um, 
Now, the next core that I'm going to talk about is electric, water, and ground. Uh, you don't really hear people talking about this that much, but all really good typings. Um, and I feel like the next two, the next two cores that I'm going to talk about are better than just going for a standard uh, fire, grass, water core. But um, yeah, electric types very useful. Uh, like the meme is fast electric type um, is essential for draft league. It's that's not true at all, but an electric type is pretty important on a team. It doesn't need to be fast, but it does need to be there. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, it, it doesn't have to be, but I definitely prefer to run a team with an electric type mon on it. Uh, just um, with bulky waters being so prevalent, um, having an electric type that can hit that really well is generally pretty useful. Um, I mean, a grass type too, but... Um, Generally, in my opinion, you try and get a more offensive electric and a bulkier grass when it comes to uh, drafting, but uh, we'll go into that a bit later uh, of why I think that. But yeah, electric, water, and ground um, complement each other fairly nicely and uh, while covering weaknesses or like being offensively good against each other. Water types hit the ground, ground hits the electric, and electric hits the water. Um, where's a good combination to get for a draft league team, I think. Uh, there's a lot of speed, damage, and bulk options in all of these tiers. Uh, electrics are generally really fast. Um, grounds can be really bulky. They can do a lot of damage. For some utility, like stealth rocks and um, stuff like that, um, a lot as well. Um, and then, as I said, waters, uh, the higher tier ones gen generally tend to be the bulkier ones. Uh, things like Suicune, Manaphy, um, Melodic, and stuff like that. There are some good offensive options as well, like the Keldeo uh, for alligators up there. Um, uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Lots of ground options um, around in most of tiers. I mean... All three of these types have good bonds in a lot of tiers. Like even down low for electrics, you can get Manetric, you can get uh, Zev Striker if I, as I've got pictured here. Um, Electrode is super fast. Uh, stuff like that. Um, ground types, you've got things ranging from the uh, Excadrill Doug Trio down to Mudsdale, um, Palisand, and stuff like that. So lots of options uh, depending on what you want to fit your team, but all of these are pretty important to get, I think. Uh, and the last, um, the last core that I'm going to really talk about here is the grass flying and rock ice core. Um, once again, all of these typings have uh, plenty of options. Grass, there's things ranging from Sep um, from Superior to Celebi to uh, what we got uh, Tangrowth, Tangela, um, all those, Verizion, all, there's, there's lots of grass types to choose from depending on what's going to fit your team. Flying types, once again there's tons as well. Uh, the thing about flying though is um, there's a lot of dual type options when it comes to flying. There's there's like Tornadus as a solo um, flying type, but um, everything else. I mean, I, I guess you don't really count the normal flying types really as a um, dual type. But I mean, you get things like Star Raptor and Bravery, Bravery, and um, stuff like that as the normal flying types which are the closest to a mono flying type that you can get besides tornadoes um but yeah there's lots of flying type options ranging from things all the way up in tier one down to tier five at every points level whatever um that can fit your team just from the 
point of having their dual typing uh, fit your team. Like you can get Crobat as a really fast type, flying type. Um, get Mandibars as a more defensive flying type. Um, and that'll help with filling out other typings on your team as well. Um, and while Rock and Ice types I don't feel are essential on a team, um, having at least one of them is pretty essential. Um, like you don't need to have them both, but having one of them I think is is important, uh, relatively important. Um, if you can't get either of them on your team, then having something that has good coverage of that typing is important. Having something that can hit with ice type, well, having multiple things that can hit with ice type moves uh, outside of HP ice, having multiple things that can hit with rock type moves outside of HP rock um, can be quite important as well. Um, so yeah, that's um, the kind of cores that I look for when I'm drafting. Um, but outside of cores, there are other things, other utilities that mons provide that um, that you should, that I feel that you should be looking at when you're drafting a team. Um, that I look at personally when I'm I'm drafting a team. So hazard setters uh, can be quite threatening for an opponent's team, and providing all that reliable chip as things switch in and switch out and uh, making sure that your opponent has to try and bring a, a hazard remover in most situations uh, obviously setting up hazards is less important in a hyper offense team um, you're generally going to want to go for just the, um, the offensive moves to do damage but uh, getting up stealth rocks like at the start uh, with a suicide lead or something like that can still be really useful uh, because it can turn a lot of moves from rolls to not killing into either potential okos or guaranteed okos. So even if you're running a hyper offense team, um, hazard setters are fairly important. Um, otherwise, a balanced team, you're going to need them uh, because a lot of your mons aren't going to have the on damage output that a hyper offense team would have and so those that extra chip will be important in uh, killing your opponent's mons quicker um, and then a stall team uh, is quite likely to have many hazard setters because um, the the ha chip hazard uh, the hazard chip I should say is uh, is good for breaking down your opponent's team while you sit there and recover. Um, on the flip side of the hazard setters is the hazard removal, obviously. Uh, very important, I guess, um, on most times team styles. If you're running a stally team, then uh, you will be switching a lot. So even if you've got lots of recovery and stuff like that, um, Generally, you'd probably want to still bring at least one remover, uh, or you'd want at least one remover on your team. In general, I try and um, aim for at least two different types, two different mons that can provide hazards and hazard removal per draft. Having multiple options for that means you're not locked into bringing the same, the same mon every single week, uh, which can be quite important as well, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, back to hazard removal, uh, getting defog and rapid spin, um, getting at least one of both is ideal, um, especially if you're setting up your own hazards, having something that can rapid spin is, um, very nice. Defog, if you're not worried about setting up your own hazards and just want to make sure that your opponent can't stack hazards on you, um, defog is pretty important. The problem with that is uh, it's mostly flying types that are known for defog. I mean, defog is on so many different things now, which is really nice. I really wish there was a rapid spin equivalent on more things as well. Um, but 
Uh, a lot of defoggers are weak to rocks, to stealth rocks as well, so um, being careful with that is quite important too. Uh, but there are options to work around that as well. Um, and while rounded poisons are not necessarily uh, the most important thing, um, having something that can switch in on T-spikes and just absorb them without anything on your team getting poisoned um, can be really nice. But, I mean, you can work around it with um, things like Kamala that have an ability that stop them getting poisoned. Uh, flying or levitate types that don't get poisoned from T spikes. Um, or like steel types. Um, so, if you've got a team that um, doesn't really get hit by um, T spikes, then a grounded poison is obviously not necessarily very important. Um, the next thing on the list is momentum. So momentum is very important to have on a team. Um, I feel like it's good to have a variety of options um, from fast and slow momentum users. You want fast momentum users to get you momentum um, into bulky mons to take hits for these um, more offensive fast mons. So things like uh, Heliolisk, uh, I, I guess Jump Off as I've got here, um, but uh, Tapu Koko, um, Tornadus Theory, and uh, any other fast electric. Uh, this is this is where I think the meme of the the fast electric being uh, essential in draft league comes from. Um, just because Volt Switch. And U turn uh, are two of the most important moves in the in the game to, to have in your arsenal. Just um, having things that can threaten something out, and then be able to um, move into something else that uh, like gives you the momentum in the game, basically. Um, so, say you've got a Tapu Koko in against um, a Melodic or something like that. The Melodic's not going to want to take a Thunderbolt, so he switches out, you U-turn or Volt Switch with your Coco, and he goes into uh, a bulky Grass type. I mean, not necessarily the best, best uh, against a Coco because he could have like Brave Bird or something like that, but you know what I mean, like he, he goes into something that's going to want to take that Electric type hit, you, you uh, use your Volt Switch or U turn to get out, and then you go into uh, your hard hitting flying type for the bulky grass, or your own grass type or water type for his his ground type that he brings in on the Coco that you turned uh, that you turned on, um, and then he's got to switch again, and uh, like if you if you've got another momentum user that you've switched into, you switch back out and it, it, it can just be very hard for your opponent to keep up with and it, it does put a lot of pressure and it can put out a lot of chip as well. Um, more important, it, it, momentum is more important in a hyper offense or a balanced style team. Um, a stall team is generally just going to hard switch into things that take hits. Um, though, like, momentum can still be useful on a bulky team, for sure. Um, especially things like Ton Pass, or, uh, yeah, just slow U-turns and, uh, slow Volt Switches are good for allowing a bulky mon to take a hit and then switch out into something that's gonna be an offensive threat, and then... The faster offensive um, bolt switches and u turners are going to be able to switch out before your opponent can hit them, and then um, let the bulky parts of your team take a hit. Um, in terms of hyper offense, obviously you're not really going to have those bulky mons to take the hits, but you can at least uh, switch your threats around into something that's going to be threatening 
for what's in front of your opponent. Uh, so yeah, that's that's part of the reason why I think momentum is um, almost essential to look at drafting. You want at least one or you want at least one of each of a Volt Switcher and a U-Turner in most drafts, in my opinion. But having more momentum than that is never really a bad thing. Uh, number eight is a ground resist. Like, levitate is all well and good. Flying is all well and good. Um, but I feel like that with the prevalence of Zygarde in draft league format, and even just other strong grounds in general, um, and the fact that uh, a lot of the immunities are still not um, super good because most ground types, or most immunities would be a flying type. And then a lot of flying types are weak to rock, which a lot of ground types have that rock coverage. So they're not necessarily the best switch-ins um, as that is quite a, um, an obvious switch so it's always something that's going to be like a 50 50 if you're going to be switching into a into a rock move or the ground move that you expect um so like yeah ground immunities are all well and good but with the evasiveness of zygarde like either you have zygarde on your team and then uh you could still have to worry about zygarde 10 percent <laughs> or um you don't have either of the zygardes and then you've got to have at least one or two matches in a season that's going to be facing a Zygarde. Having something that can resist those ground moves is, um, I feel like, pretty important on a team. Now, that doesn't mean you need to get a bulky grass, but uh, that is a good way of going about it. Uh, Tangler, Tangrowth, um, I mean ones like Amoongus and Vileplume and uh, stuff like that that are half poison as well, Venusaur, uh, while can still be pretty useful, um, not the best ground resist because they don't resist ground, so uh, they can still get hit decently hard, um, but uh, the straight grass typings like the Tangrowth, the Tangler, um, I guess Superior is pretty bulky. Uh, Shaman. Uh, Celebi can be pretty good um, as a ground resist. I know I know some people don't really like Celebi, but I think it's an alright mon. Um, I mean, Wormadam is the best ground resist because it's four times uh, resisted if you're in the plant form or whatever it is. Um, Grass, gra uh, grass and bug uh, both resist ground, so uh, they're both the typings that you would want to look at as a ground resist. Um, Glissopod, a nice bulky boy, um, straightens out um, a lot of grounds as well because of that water typing. Buzzwall, once again, um, can take that ground hit really well, especially because most ground moves are um, physical moves, and Buzzwall's physical bulk is. Um, same, he, he makes a really good Zygarde check, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so not too much more to say on this topic, but a ground resist is definitely a very important part of a draft. Um, especially with the prevalence of Zygarde and that thousand arrows move that hits uh, flying types and levitate mons and stuff like that anyway. So, I know that's only like max potentially two teams in a season that you would have to um that you'd have to prep a ground resist for a hundred percent um but i still think it's very very useful to have one on your team because it can help um with other weaknesses on your team if you've got a lot of ground weak mons or ground neutral mons um even if you've got a couple of levitators or flying types, having a ground resist uh, is good as well. Um, now, phasing an anti-setup is another important part of looking for on a team, I think. Having um, some mons that can use Haze, Dragon Tail, Roar, Wellwind, or have the unaware ability 
can be quite useful. Um, generally, unaware mons are quite bulky, so they can sit in front of a setup sweeper and um, stop them sweeping your whole team. Haze can remove uh, any stat increases. Dragon Tail can uh, hit any non fairy type and switch them out. Um, Roar and Wellwind can even hit things behind subs because of the kind of moves that they are. Um, obviously, things like Dragon Tail, Roar, and Whirlwind have that priority debuff, so you always move last if you use them. Um, but having some kind of phasing and anti setup on your team is pretty important so that you just don't get 6 0'd some weeks. Um, yeah, not a lot more to say about that, but yeah, keep an eye out for those kinds of moves. And then. Um, in general, this is where you start looking for other um, utility moves, uh, to, like just other utility moves to think about when you are building a team. Web, Swish, Aurora Veil. Um, like if you're going for a balanced team, Aurora Veil and Wish uh, can be quite useful. They can be useful on a bulky team as well. Uh, Hyper Offense can use them, uh, not so much. Um, Wish isn't so much as useful because you don't really want something to be in against something and going for a support move. Um, but Aurora Veil can be useful on a high offense team, especially if you pick the Alolan Nine Towers, which um, is a decently offensive um, Aurora Veil user. So uh, webs webs can be pretty useful on a high offense team as well. Um, just a suicide lead webs and then just um, destroy things with the rest of your team um, that outspeeds them now. Uh, so yeah, webs I, f I feel like is better on a balance slash uh, hyper offense team, whereas Wish and Aurora Veil vale are better on a um, balance or stall lead team. So. Uh, and obviously there's other utilities depending uh, on what your team can use and what's allowed in the draft. Uh, baton pass um, can be quite useful for a bit of momentum. Um, check your draft rules. If you're allowed speed pass, then getting a, something that can baton pass speed into something else um, can be quite useful. Uh, if you can't speed pass, you could potentially use other stats and pass them. So if you're allowed, then a baton passer might still be kind of useful. Um, Healing Wish, Memento, Screens, Heal Bell, Aromatherapy, Tailwind, Trick um, are all very useful boosts to have on Mons. Um, just some utility moves like that. Um, so looking for those things can be um, can help you decide on some niche picks as well. Uh, if you're looking to decide between a couple of Mons, then um, yeah, that could be the tiebreaker. So, just looking for stuff like that can be can be interesting as well. So, uh, yeah. So that's uh, been my top ten. Well, my ten considerations, uh, important considerations for draft league drafting. Let me know if you think I'm uh, full of shit or if you agree with any points. Either way, I'm happy to hear. Uh, Thank you for watching everyone and I will talk to you all uh, next time with, I think my next list is going to be top 10 defensive mons, so that will be coming at some point. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.